Hi everybody and welcome back to Alex Elliott Golf and welcome to the channel if you are a brand new viewer. Don't forget to subscribe and give all this content a thumbs up. So today's video is all about two ways you can help stop your slice forever. Now this is a ball flight we all dread. We don't like to see that ball start way left of target and then curve it off to the right and then finish way right of target. Something we dread, especially off the tee but more so with irons as well going into greens. So today's video is all about how we can match the face to the path to begin with and then how we can create a better pattern to the golf ball. But let's just firstly talk about how a slice is caused. So we've got our blue line here which establishes our ball to target line. Then we're going to say our red line is our path. So that is going to be an out to in path when we've got a face that's open to our path and open to our ball to target line causing that curvature to be excessively left to right. And this is something where we can talk about how we can develop a bit of club face control and path control to really help us stop and organize our body to stop that slice happening forever. So let's firstly get into it. Let's talk about how we can stop this slice in terms of matching our face to our path. So when we come in for a lesson, if you're a big slicer, we'd always start and try and get you pulling the ball. So we're going to match our face to our path. So we'd have a path that would be left and then we try and match that face to the path. So we're going to hit that pull shot. But then once we've got that relationship of a matched face and path, we'd then try and move that relationship a little bit more into out. And that would help, hopefully help us try and achieve straight ball flight or try and get that face a little bit close to an into out path and achieve that nice draw ball flight. So let's firstly talk about how we can get this club closely matching our path. So let's just firstly, I want you guys to just check your grip. I want you to make sure you've got two and a half knuckles on our top hand. And then this crease between our thumb and our forefinger points between our right ear and our right shoulder for a right-handed player. And then we're going to nicely hold on. Don't mind if you do overlap, interlock, or baseball, but this crease between my thumb and my forefinger again points into my right shoulder. And this is just really just making sure we've got a, a little bit of a stronger grip if you've had a week previously, or if you've got a very strong grip, which would be unlikely if you're a slicer, but this could happen still. Let's just make sure we get this grip really nice and closer towards what I like to see as a neutral grip. So once we've established and we've got a nice neutral grip, I want us to feel like if we're a slice of the golf ball, we'd always have this face open to the path. So it almost looked like these slices were dragging this club through. We'd see this chicken wing almost, and this face would be held open. Because I always think we react to the path. If our path's left, we're going to want to keep our face open because we feel like that's the only way we can get that ball to the target. And that in the relationship causes our slice off to the right. So we'd sort of see this motion with our left hand. We wouldn't see much of this rolling action and really closing of this face through impact and feeling like we're trying to square it. Our face would be dragged through. We'd see it be open, causing our curvature off to the right. So what I want you to do is I want to establish a better release pattern. So what I want to do is I want you to put this T in between the ring if you were married. So the finger that you have put a ring on if you were married and your middle finger. I want you to place the golf club on the ground to begin with. And I want you to feel like now, if we were slicing it, this T would always, majority of the time, be pointing back at us. What I want you to feel is now, whilst moving the body and getting that more active, because that's a very key point, I want you to feel like we're going to point that T up into the air. So I'll show you this one face on now. So imagine we're hitting it to the side of the screen. We're going to try and feel like, instead of we're dragging this through and pointing this T back this way, I want you to feel like we're going to point that T up into the air. And watch this, I do this and feel like my forearm's rolling, my body's getting active through impact. I'm not just stood here moving this. I'm making sure that I'm opening the hips, really trying to feel like I could do this in a dynamic way and athletic also. So what is this doing? This is helping you develop actually the feeling of this club releasing. And this is going to feel a little bit extreme and will look a little bit extreme for some people, but we've really got to go to the opposite end of the spectrum to try and find that neutral point. So if we then put this in terms of our club now, so we take this T out, and I'd do probably 10, 15 reps of you feeling like you're releasing this club, getting this T pointing up into the sky. Really gives you a good sense of this face squaring up into impact. So we said prior to this, we'd have a face and a path that would be face open and path left. Now we've got this feeling we checked our grip. So now we're feeling like this palm on the way through is going to be pointing towards the sky. And what this would look like, we'd hopefully see a face and a path that more match. So our both would be pointing towards the left. And that really gives us a sense of matching face and path. And we start to hopefully see, firstly, some pull shots. Now, this is kind of the first instance of how we get rid of our slides. We have to match the face and the path, like we said earlier. So we're now feeling we're getting this action. So I'll show you this from face on now. And this might also look like an extreme for you, that that right would actually cross the left. And that would be giving us what well, we felt like the T was pointing towards the sky. And again, this is extreme. This is only our first part. So we're going to be feeling this action. 
So now we've got a face and a path that are closely matched. Let's talk about how we can now move that relationship of our face and path left to being a bit more neutral, so closer towards our ball to target line, so not as biased out to win. We're going to try and strive for that into our path with a face that's slightly close to the path, and we'd start to see that draw curvature. Now we've got this face and path closely matching towards the left here, and maybe even getting the face a little bit close to the path, but that's fine for now. We're trying to create the complete opposite to that slice relationship we had. And we did this through feeling of this release and feeling like we're getting a better release in terms of this club releasing through impact and hopefully squaring up. And we did this with one check in the grip, but then also feeling like we're pointing that T up to the sky during that impact position through to that follow through and making sure we were moving that body with it. So let's now move on to second stage. What I want you to do is, I want you to place a black well, an alignment stick just down your ball to target line here, and I'm going to place that one in the ground there. And what I want you to do is, we're going to really now take that relationship you had, that face and that path, and our bike wheel that was left now, face and left with path, we're going to try and match that face and path now, but really give us a more of an in to square to in relationship. Or hopefully, actually, what we really want to achieve is an in to out path with a face that's slightly close to our path. So what I want you to do is, we said that people slice, we have an out to win path and a face that's open to the path and ball's target line. And I see this very often with during the backs and we see this steepen of the club in transition, club gets outside our hands and we see this motion through impact. So what I want you to do is, and this is going to be a feeling I want you to create and allow you to shallow the shaft and hopefully produce that into, into out path and try and get that face close to the path and that draw curvature. And this is why this alignment stick is great. So what I want you to do is, the first stage of this almost, we're talking about path now, so the second stage of our fixing your slice, the first was our grip and release. Second stage is now fixing that path. And what I want you to do is, I want you to swing to the top. And I want you to imagine you've got a bucket of water between your left and right elbow. In transition now, I want you to feel as though you pinch the right elbow towards the left and tip this bucket of water behind you. I don't want you to stand up, but the feeling of is pinching the right towards the left. So we see the shaft almost shallow on the downswing, help us create that more into out path. And then we add that with that release that we had, we'd hopefully have a path that's into out and a face that's close to the path. And no, it's a very exaggerated release, but we have to create the opposite to find that neutral middle ground. So now we've done that, I want you to do this, I want you to do this in those stages, and if you've watched these videos before, and if you haven't, check the drill video out, and this is all about the gears. So what I want you to do is, first drill, would be gear one and we do this with hitting golf balls we do it as slow as we can to the top pinch the right towards the left tip the bucket of water behind us come down into impact feel that we release and we create that over exaggerated release position where we had that t pointing towards the sky and then we do it into gear two so it'd be a little bit faster again so we'd feel to the top a little bit faster pinch the right towards the left and release then we would go to gear three to the top pinch the right towards the left and release gear four a little bit faster and gear five would be all the way up to full speed and all i recommend is you're doing that with five golf balls so the first would only just go just in front of us second go a little bit further and so on and so on and what this does is this helps you get the feeling of the whole body movement together rather than feeling that the golf swing is in little different segments we get a feeling of what the body's doing we allow and understand and get the feeling of what we want to create and then it's a lot easier for you to apply into the golf swing so our fix to our path is really feeling like we're pinching the right elbow towards the left and tipping that bucket of water behind us. So now we've got this alignment stick in the ground here. This is where I want you to take it to the kind of the next stage of the path and face drill. We're going to do this all together. I want you to imagine this is your tree and it's directly down your ball to target line now. So for you slices, you'd have started left of the tree and it would have finished way right of the tree. So what I want you to do now is with that feeling we had correcting the path, so feeling like you pinched the right towards the left and that feeling of the release, I want you to now feel that like you're going to start that ball just right of your tree and get it hooking way left. So we're gonna try and create the complete opposite to what we've had previously. So let's hit the shot now. Let's really feel like we create a path that starts into out with a face that's close to your path. And we would really start to feel that like we create a really big draw curvature. We do this by pinching the right towards the left and we feel that release. Let's hit this one now. So nice draw curvature there, not as much draw as I'd like, but I guess for you slicers out there, if you try and do that, this will hopefully probably produce a pretty neutral ball flight. And what this does is, this really gets us to a middle ground where we feel like our bike wheel now is closer to what we want it to be. It's not extreme out to in, and it's not going to be hopefully too extreme into out. But what I would say is, I would over exaggerate this, but be very wary that you don't go too far with it. For me, you guys that do slice it, I don't think you can go too far for the time being, but really be aware of that. So the first one, check your grip. 
then we feel like we get that release of that T pointing towards the sky. And finally, we wanted to feel like we pinch the right towards the left, starting the ball right of our tree, and understanding that if we get an into our path of the face that's slightly closed, we get it starting right of our tree and drawing left of it. And that is creating the complete opposite than the slice you had. So go away, let me know, comment down below if this video helped you fix your slice. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Alex Elliott Golf.